so excited. It just looks beautiful. Yummy, Chef. Oh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. I hope you're enjoying the holidays right now. And you know, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna be doing on Christmas morning. So I thought today we'd talk about a Christmas brunch. And what better time for me to share three recipes that I've not shared before on the Very Vera Show right out of the Very Vera Cookbook. We're gonna start with my sweet potato rolls. These are so moist, so scrumptious, and they're not that hard to make. I want you to try it. And then we're gonna move into the portobello mushroom soup that was so popular in our cafe. I'm going to add sausage to it today. And then finally we're going to do the white chocolate raspberry bars that were so delicious that we served for lunch in our cafe. And we're going to also do a charcuterie board that will be easy for you to do during the holidays. So let me get my apron on and we'll get started with those sweet potato rolls. All right, so these are the sweet potato rolls. And you may remember these from my mail order company, but you also might remember them from the Neiman Marcus catalog. I will never forget when Neiman Marcus reached out to us and said, we want to put a few of your products into our mail order catalog. And you know, back in the day, that was the biggest deal. It's still a big deal, but I was really excited. We sold so many of these through there catalog it was just great so I've had a few steps to get to this point but look at this look how beautiful this dough has risen so let me tell you how I got to this point so we started with mashing the sweet potatoes to get a really nice sweet potato puree and I used about three-fourths of a cup for this recipe so I've had my measuring cups once I've done it to get that measured out then you get your water warm did I use the microwave for this and you want it to be between 110 and 112 degrees so use that quick read thermometer is great for this purpose so then I'm going to add sugar put that into the mixer add sugar to it and all I want to do there is just get the sugar dissolved into the warm water once I've done that, then you're gonna add a package of your yeast, your rapid rise yeast, to that mixture. Just stir it quickly, and then you're gonna let that bloom for about five minutes, just to get it all incorporated. Once that's done, you're gonna add back in the sweet potato puree, the butter, the salt, and the beaten eggs. And once you've mixed that together, then whisk your bread flour and your baking powder together in a bowl. Add that mixture to the dough, and you're gonna be on about a medium speed. And once you see it kind of start coming away from the edges of the bowl and sticking to the beater, then you know you're done. Once that's happened, get your cutting board nice and floured, and then you're going to pour that dough onto the floured cutting board. And at that point, I just like to get my hands nice and floured with that flour, and you're just going to kind of get it all coated on all sides. Then you want to knead it about four or five times. Once that's done, I've oiled a bowl, which is this bowl right here. I put it in my warming drawer and let it sit in the proofing box for about an hour. And it's doubled in size, it's awesome. So now I'm ready to go with making the rolls. So I'm gonna punch down that dough, look at that. Isn't that awesome? And now I'm gonna just get this cut because what I'm gonna get out of this is 24 little balls and I've floured my muffin pan and it's ready. So now, instead of flour on my hands, and I do have some dough on there, I'm gonna spray my hands with the cooking oil. And to this one fourth of a section right here, I'm gonna pull six little circles out. And this is when, you know, it's really fun to do this with your kids. You can, you know, you're just making a little ball and each one of these muffin cups is gonna get a ball. I might need just a little bit more oil on my hands. And to, you know, to do this, this then goes back with a tea towel over it and it's gonna sit for another hour just to proof and again, double in size. Then you're gonna bake these at 375 for about 
12 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna keep working with the dough. When we come back, we're gonna get started on that portobello mushroom soup. I'm gonna add a twist to it today. You're gonna love it. So I'll keep working and I'll see you back in just a minute. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me today, I'm doing Christmas brunch. I'm getting y'all all ready for having family over on Christmas Day, making it easy, casual. All of this stuff can be done ahead. Some things freeze and we'll talk about that at the end of the show today. But um, I've been really busy during the break and so I want to start by saying look at this gorgeous Lodge cast iron Dutch oven. This is their new color. This is sage green. I'm so excited about it. So I've got some butter that has been melting in here. And when I do a roux for this particular soup, which is the portobello mushroom soup that was famous in our cafe. It was our Thursday soup of the day. And on Thursdays, I mean, the place was packed. People were picking it up. They were sitting down to eat it for lunch. It was just terrific. All right, so I love to have my butter get a little bit brown because it actually adds a little bit of a nutty flavor to this. And you know, portobello mushrooms are meaty and hearty, and this is just really great. All right, so I'm gonna add in now my flour to this to make a roux. And this will also help with the color of this soup, which I think is great for it to be more of a golden brown. Oh, it smells so good. These are some really fond memories for me. All right, so while that's cooking for just a little bit, I'm gonna add my chicken base to my half and half here. All right. So let's get that going because I'm going to get that roux going while I talk to you about what I did ahead of time in my other cast iron lodge pan that's sitting over there. So let me add this slowly to the flour and butter mixture. And if you do it slowly, it thickens slowly and it doesn't take quite as long for it to come together. And you see those nice specks in there? That's part of making that brown butter, which makes this really good. Make sure I get all that chicken base in there. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and add a little bit of my half and half to this. Get that going. Oh, so creamy and delicious. And then I've also got just some whole milk. Add that. I so say today, the portobello mushrooms and onions that I've got over here, let me talk to you a little bit about what I did ahead for that. All right, so on the mushrooms, you just wanna, you know, get them kind of cleaned off. I like to use a paper towel. And I did about two heaping cups of diced portobellos. And I love to have chunks in mine so I don't cut it too thin. And then um, you get the butter melted in the pan and you're going to saute those along with the tops of your green onions to make a really flavorful sauteed mixture with the onions. And then the twist that I'm adding today, you may remember um, a few months ago we did a show with Sunset, Sunset Farm Sausage and it was so popular, it was a giveaway. And of all the giveaways we've done all year, this one was the most popular one we did. We've had so many great remarks. So we reached back out to them and said, well, we want to add your sausage to our soup today. So I went ahead and sauteed that. You see there's not a heck of a lot of fat in it, but we did drain it on paper towel. So with my soup today, we're going to be having that as an option if you want to have meat in your soup. All right, so look at how great that looks right there. I'm gonna add that in, and then we'll just be letting this simmer, and you'll be able to see it in just a few minutes all the way done. And then in Vera's Corner today, if we're gonna set a pretty table at Christmas time, I'm gonna show you how to do some beautiful napkin folds. And then when we come back, we're gonna get started on one of my favorite desserts, the white chocolate raspberry bars from the cookbook. So come back with me in just a few minutes. 
Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund. Go get it. Do you want to interest the children in learning how to set the table? Or are you having dinner guests and you want to wow them with your napkin folds? Well, let me show you three today that are fun to do. The chef's hat. Fold in half and in half again. Fold loose corners back in progressively shorter layers. Flip over and fold one corner into the other. The shirt. Fold in half into a triangle. Fold both corners to the center point. Flip over and fold the loose edge away from you and tuck one corner into the other. Spread apart the center folds. The artichoke, fold in half and in half again to find your center point. Fold each corner into the center point and do this again with your folded corners. Flip over and fold the corners into the center one last time. Carefully pull apart the folds from the flip side. I hope you'll enjoy these beautiful napkin folds. Welcome back everybody and I'm having a great time today telling everybody about Christmas brunch and you know in our cookbook that is one of the sections gives you menus for particular occasions so please check that out too. So another thing that is my favorite about the cookbook is that I introduce you to this half pan and when you make any of the bars that are in the cookbook I recommend that you go pick up one of these half pans because it is the perfect size for everything. It's going to make that many, so you're either going to eat them all when you have that many people over, or you're going to have something to put in the freezer for later. It's just perfect. All right, so in Vera's Corner today, too, I meant to mention, isn't that the cutest thing, those napkin folds? And you know, in Augusta, the children come to cooking camp. Going on this summer will be 18 years. And I always know who goes because the grandmothers will stop me at the grocery store and say, my child learned how to fold napkins at your cooking camp. So that's really cute. All right, so I was busy during the break again getting every, all the steps ready for this. So let me walk you through it. So I took this sheet pan and I always hold it over the sink and I sprayed it really well with my Baker's Joy, which is a flour and oil mixture. All right, so then I melted butter in the microwave and you know today I'm really using my warming drawer quite a bit if you want to melt your butter that's another thing you can do is use a, the warming drawer this is my uh, wolf warming drawer that's part of my M series stack here at my kitchen that I absolutely love then you're going to add half of the white chocolate chips to that warm melted butter. Just make sure they're all emerged, but don't stir it because as you can see right here, those little chips are going to show up in the crust. All right, next you're going to beat the eggs on a medium speed in your mixer until they're foamy. That's about a minute to a minute and a half. Then add your sugar and beat it on a little bit higher speed until it's really creamy. Then you're going to stir in the white chocolate chip mixture that you had. And what you're going to end up with is the fact that those chips have gotten a little bit soft because that is your crust. All right, so now you're going to add your flour, your salt, your almond flavoring, and you're going to mix that together on low. And then I just spread this evenly in the pan. I used my rubber spreader and then my metal spreader to get that good and coated. And that baked in the oven, you know, for about um, 10 to 12 minutes on 325. It's lightly golden. All right, so the recipe tells you at that point that you're supposed to do the next step warm. Well, what if you've got something else going on? Well, that's another reason the warming drawer comes in handy because I kept this in the warming drawer so it would be warm. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is my raspberry jam. And you know, this is just in any ordinary raspberry jam. Remember when I went to Wisconsin and I did with Chef Joel up at the headquarters of Sub-Zero Wolf. We made raspberry jam from the raspberries that were in the Harvest Haven orchard. And this is what this is. So this really makes this recipe special. And that could be something that, you know, you could maybe think about if this becomes your holiday traditional gift to give to somebody as the raspberry bars, make the jam and put that on a little card and speak to that point, you know, as part of the gift. All right, so that gets spread on evenly. 
And you know, as I said, you could get all of this stuff done ahead. These things will last in the freezer for six months. All right, so I've got that spread along. Now I'm gonna add the rest of my chips to what I didn't put in the pan because I only used three-fourths of the mixture for the crust. And now this is the part that I'm gonna dollop on the top. I mean, these things are so good, I can't tell you. All right, so spoonfuls on there. And I know I've got to go to break in just a minute, so I'm gonna finish during the break. But we're gonna swirl this around. We're gonna add almonds on the top. We're gonna get those baked. So when we come back, we're gonna do how I'm gonna lay this out on Christmas morning. We're gonna talk about presentation. We're gonna do a charcuterie board with Sunset Farm sausages. So do not go away. And let me finish this and I'll see you back in just a minute. back everybody and I don't know about you but I am just loving the way that this looks and you know you're in your kitchen you've got your family coming you want it to be casual you want it to be welcoming and so hopefully I've given you some ideas today that you can put to good use because most everything we've done today can be done in ahead and you just let it be very very casual so what we're going to do is walk back through what we did on each of our three recipes and as always our recipes are available on our website at veryvera.com. But remember, the cookbook has these recipes and more. And this time of the year is the perfect time to be cooking your way through that entire Berry Vera cookbook, and I hope you will. All right, so we're going to start with the sweet potato rolls. Look how beautiful! And they're just so so delicious on the inside and they're a beautiful color perfect with a bowl of soup and they're really easy to make and something that maybe the children could get involved with these freeze really well if you don't want to roll quite that big the way we sold them in our mail order company was we made one ball and we put it in an eight inch square pan and you got a dozen to a pan so this is a large dinner roll but you can make them a little bit smaller than that all right, then we moved to the portobello mushroom soup. It is really, really creamy, has nice chunks of portobello in it. The aroma is fantastic. It can sit on simmer on your stove. This will also freeze, so you could make it in November and have it ready for December. Like I said, think of the things that you can do ahead. I love to serve in a big, um, mug like this because they can, you know, take it with the handle, go in, sit down in the den, you know, maybe while the children are opening up the presents. But the special kick today and twist to the recipe is Sunset Farm sausage. And this is a hot, so you can have sausage with it if you want, which then makes it an entire dish. But this will also, you'll see Sunset Farms again on the charcuterie board in just a minute. So I love the portobello mushroom soup. Okay, the white chocolate raspberry bars. Look at that beautiful cut on those bars. And again, the pan is the key because it makes the perfect number, the perfect height. You get consistency throughout. We actually have a template that we use to cut these, but these are one inch squares. You can make them, cut them, and then freeze them or just freeze the whole pan, whichever one you have more room for. But those are really great bite size. That makes a great gift as well. All right, so let's walk through the charcuterie board. So the board itself is something that's been in my family for a long, long time. And we love to pull it out. I actually have it propped up in my family room. It's just a part of my decor. But we kind of touched it up today, maybe made the copper look a little bit better. So it's just a really great presentation. And again, it's just on the kitchen counter right here by the soup. It has everything from the Sunset Farm sausage. They've got a bell pepper and onion, a jalapeno pepper, and a cracked pepper. So, you know, take a toothpick and mark what the flavors are so your family will know which ones to choose. And mix in fresh fruit 
a variety of cheeses. I've got a blue cheese, I've got a cheese ball, I've got the cheddar cheese, we've got fruit, dried fruit, olives, and you know, throw in some greenery out of the yard. You don't have to do flowers. I've brought in two of our family favorite Christmas photos from years and years ago. All right, so then for the children, we've got chocolate hot chocolate and that is amazing in a little um, way that you can display it. But it's a great teacher gift. It's just a wonderful thing. If it could be a favor if you were having people over. And also for the grandchildren, I love these Royal Stewart plaid plastic charger plates. Great to put the paper plate on top for the grandchildren. So you remember I always say no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I hope you will enjoy these recipes. Merry Christmas everybody and Happy New Year.